That is so smooth. What's up, friends? Today, we are declicking and modding this beautiful Leica Sumilux R 35mm lens for cinema production. Right now, it is still clicked, as you can hear and see. And this is nice, but for me, when I, for example, walk from outside to inside or reverse, um, I want to make smooth aperture pools to change the exposure without the viewer noticing it. So that's why I want to declick this lens. I'm also going to add these beautiful aluminum focus gears um, and of course a nice ring. So all my lenses are conformed to 77 millimeters of outer or inner diameter. A nice cap like this. And of course, most importantly, an EF mount. This whole kit is made by a brand called Precisious. I'll leave the link in the description below. They are doing an amazing job creating extremely high quality products for your Leica or other lenses. So check out the website, uh, they're cool. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is you want to remove the old Leica mount. If it's super tight, use a soldering iron to really quickly tap on these, uh, on these screws so the Loctite that is inside the screw will get loose, all right? If you strip the screw, you're screwed. So you want, <laughs> you're screwed. So you really want to do this uh, with care. All right. So take out the screw, place it in your whatever basket you have. And now you can see that this whole mount is loose. But as you can see here, there is a ring inside, a black ring inside that is also tied up with three extremely small screws. All right. You want to loosen these up as well. So for that, we need a small flat screwdriver. I'm going to use the black one. I will leave a link to all these items I'm using in the description below. So this is the ring that I was talking about. Cool, put it in a basket. Remove the Leica mount like that, put it on the side. And now you can take away the aperture ring. All right, so this is the, the, the ring that actually shows what kind of aperture you're on. So put that to the side as well. And now you can see that on the side here, there are some screws, this screw, and on the other side, the other screw. And as you can see on the inside of this aperture ring, there are grooves that these screws fall into. All right. So we want to take them out as well. I'm gonna use a bit of a bigger flat screwdriver and I'll just take them out. There we go. Nice smooth click and then now we have removed the screws, we can see what we need to do. All right, so if we take a closer look at this little ball, that is the, the, the ball that creates the sound of the click, all right? So you might think that we can just easily remove the ball and we're good to go. Unfortunately not, because there's a spring inside. So if we remove the ball and we change our aperture to F8, it will drift really slowly. Something that I've seen is that a lot of people declick their lenses this way and use grease like this stuff and make the aperture ring extremely stiff. This won't really do the job because at some point the grease will wear out and your aperture ring will drift, right? So you need to remove the spring. So the spring is inside, I'll show you a little later. And um, if we remove the spring, we actually need to glue this, this thingy that, you know, like, creates the aperture movement to the outer ring of the lens. Why? Because otherwise, if we turn our aperture ring, nothing will happen. All right, let's do it. So we remove the ball first, gently pick it up, take it out and put it in our tray. And inside this little hole, there is a spring. The spring on my tweezer, awesome. Sweet, so next, our lens is technically declicked. What we can do now is, lift up the whole aperture system. There we go. So this is the aperture mechanism. Yeah, we'll put it back later on, uh, put it here. And then as you can see, if we move this around, you can see that there's a spring, right? You can see there's a spring. So we'll, uh, we'll cut this spring, take it out, and then we'll uh, glue a little bit of steel on the inside of our aperture mechanism. Let's get it going. We won't have to remove the whole spring, but at least a part of it. Sweet, okay, so now that's done. Next up, we'll uh, 
put a little steel plate on the inside of this area here. So I'll quickly show you what happens if you don't glue it to the outside ring, all right? So let's put back the screw. Let's find the hole. There we go. All right, so right now it is stuck a little bit, but watch what happens. If I turn the ring, you can see that it, it, it just doesn't work properly, all right? So we want to have it stuck in the corner and then we can operate our aperture smoothly. All right, so that's what we'll do now. Awesome. So put your lens down and then take one of these steel, I don't know what they're called. I think they are called uh, or used for curtains, right? So these are curtain uh, hangers, I guess. So what I do next is I protect the lens, right? If I work with something like this on, you know, above a lens, I'll always protect the lens element with like a, a, a clean cloth. Why? Because if I'm playing around with this, this little piece of steel and it falls on the element, you could create scratches. So make sure you're always aware of these scratches. All right, so bend it open. There we go. You only need a little bit, so I'm going to clip this part. There we go. Sweet. So now we have this part. I'm going to use two of them and then slowly, gently bend it. All right. Let's put it in there. Great. Okay, so good. What happens now is, as you can see, we have this little piece of steel in there, but the ring can still move behind it. So we'll make another one and place it against the piece of steel that we just created so that it blocks the way. All right. So take your other half, which you've cut, put your cloth back on, and then slowly start to bend it again. More there. Beautiful. Great. All right, so now the, the exciting or scary part starts because we need to glue it. Yeah. What I do is I'll take out this uh, aperture mechanism. There we go. So if we put it in there, you can see that it fits beautifully, right? Something that you don't want to have is something sticking out. So if you're searching for something similar, like this, this, this curtain hanger, make sure it's not thicker than this uh, gold edge, right? So make sure it fits nicely in there. You can use paper clips or anything small, steelish, steelish. Wow, well, uh, but you you know what I mean. All right. So first off, let's create our epoxy resin. Right there. Right. So. Always pull back a little bit, put the cap back on. Using a cotton wipe uh, or cotton thingy to clean your ear. But uh, I cut off one of the sides, so I'm using this to, to mix it. Mix it really well. Put a gentle amount on the side. A little bit is enough. Also on the bottom. Now we put it inside the ring, all right? So I'm just gonna gently place it in the ring right there. And then take your cotton wipe and then clean it up a little bit. And then gently scrape off any excess epoxy resin. There we go, nice. Then, we do the same thing with the other one. There we go. Try not to touch any important parts. All right. Now, you want to make sure that everything is connected, all right? Also, push everything against this little thing so this has no room to move. That's the most important part. Otherwise, you will have a little bit of a like a, you know, if you move the aperture ring, it won't react instantly. All right, so move it up, push it against it, uh, look up if it's clean or not. That's a little hair. Awesome, looks good. All right, so we'll put it down, take the epoxy away. Watch out if you, you know, you want, don't want to have that stuff on your clothes or anything. Cool, so now we let it dry for, I'd say 20 minutes, 
20, 30 minutes, and then we'll uh, assemble everything back together. We'll grease the aperture ring to make it nice and stiff so we have a really like professional sort of feeling to it. And then uh, we'll wrap up the lens by modding it for our cinema film production. Be back in a sec. 30 minutes later. So now we are going to put the lens back together. But first, I'm going to clean this whole system up, so the outside, and put new grease on. So how do we do that? Well, I'm using tissues for that. Kleenex, that's called. What I do here first is I make a nice thick thingy of it and then put a little bit of uh, ethanol on it. And then I'm going to gently scrape along the edges. So this grease is from Japan Hobby Shop, I guess it's called. You can see that it is extremely thick. And that's nice because that will create a very stiff motion when you want to uh, change the aperture. Gently apply it to the outer ring like that. There we go. All right, sweet. What we can do now is put the screws back in. Might be a little bit of a tedious job, but it needs to be done. If you are st Wow. <laughs> All right, so this is disaster. A screw flew away. So let's, uh, let's search it. 10 minutes later. <clears throat> all right, well, found it. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. This happens, especially if you're uh, doing a lot of things at the same time, but uh, put it in there. Use your flat screwdriver, put it in place, and then gently screw it tight. There we go. All right, next up, we put back the ring, align it. And then always check if it's uh, proper or not. That's good. What you also can do here is to put a little bit of grease on this inside because this will also create friction, you know? So every, every part that moves, you can grease. Oh, wait, hold on. Forgot a step here. Always remove old grease first. Then apply the grease. There we go. Now align it. All right, nice and tight. Cool. Next up, reassembling. So we'll put back the, oh, it's the Litex mount, sorry. We'll put back the original mount first, uh, align this little red dot with the red dot on the lens, which is missing on mine. But uh, you can see that it fits perfectly with all the holes. Then next up, we'll put back this black ring Make sure to check if you're in the right position. It needs to go in like that. So I'm gonna try and squeeze in like so. Hop out. Put back the first screw, try to grab it even. That's already pretty difficult. All right. <laughs> that's that. Nice and smooth. Perfect. So that's fixed. Now. We put back the original mount, yeah? So we put one screw in. I always use the original screw right at the dot. So back and use our zero, zero screwdriver. Put it in there, nice and tight. Next, we use our Litex mount, which is this one. So you see a red dot here, all right? So to align it properly so that the, um, like all the, the signs are at the top, you want to put your red dot two holes to the side, all right? So like that. You've got these two holes right here, two holes to the side on the left side, okay? Put it down, align it. All right, wiggle it around a little bit so the screws fall into place and use your zero, zero screwdriver to tie it up. Good, all right, clean it up a little bit, then use an EF cap and put it on there. Oh, that's it. All right, next up we're modding the lens. So we are using first our 
Focus gear. Important because we want to use this lens with professional focus uh, pool systems, right? So you get this inner ring with it. Uh, sometimes these outer rings fit just the way it is, but for this lens, we needed a little bit of a 3D printed plate, which you also get along when you purchase it. So just align it and then tie it up with the supplied screws and this tiny Allen wrench. Don't overdo it, just tie it up a little bit. There we go. Smooth as butter. Smooth aperture clicks are gone or smooth aperture clicks are gone. The aperture clicks are gone and it's smooth now, wow. Next up, our front ring. Again, I use this because then all my lenses are conformed to 77 uh, millimeter. And then of course, a beautiful black uh, engraved cap. It's not a sticker, it's actually engraved in there with a laser. So that's really nice. Beautiful, beautiful looking lens. Um, it's the last addition to my kit. And this is uh, how you declick and mod them. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions regarding this whole process, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I wish you a very, very nice day. Whoa. That is so smooth. Amazing. All right. See you later.